Alright guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous fall evening here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas. Getting close to midnight on Sunday night, November 26, 2017, me and the little dog are beyond, beyond exhausted for three days of hard work selling Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons for the Optimist Club. So here it is, I'm just now getting to my end times margarita. And a little bit late, but better late than never for my new Sunday feature that I bring you, uh, try to bring you every Sunday View from Zombie Island. I noticed that View from Zombie Island hit four digits last week for the first time. So View from Zombie Island is catching on in the Doomosphere. And of course, the View from Zombie Island is coming from us from England by our Alert Tribes member, Andy Gardner. Andy Gardner, who... Uh, has become probably my most well-known commentator on my rants. He takes my rants to the next level in his comments. Good God, guys. Uh, Andy has written pretty much a novel this week. As hard as it has been for me, I have condensed his 20 or 30 comments down to six of his rants. So let me dive right in and see what is on the alert mind of Andy Gardner in his view from Zombie Island. Uh, this is his uh, review of David Attenborough's Blue Planet 2. Take it away, Andy. <clears throat> I watched the plastic episode of Blue Planet yesterday. Still not a porno, damn it. Never mind. In spite of that, it is a stunningly beautiful series and one of the few perks of living in Zombie Island. If you were a clueless moron, proud of your little family, your vague, tenuous success in the cancer and the three cars parked in your driveway, you could easily imagine everything in the sea was fine and carry on being a total cunt. The plastic scenes were not particularly horrible and very downplayed compared to what they could have been, i.e. there are literally whole islands constructed of plastic garbage in the Pacific in places where all the albatrosses have died from eating innocent-looking and once useful bits and bobs like toothbrushes, sporks, plastic ducks, fairy liquid washing up bottle tops, etc. Imagine having a plastic spork lodged in your gizzard. David's brother Richard in Jurassic Park or was it that tall, nerdy one, once said that nature will always find a way. Well, it has certainly found a way to make islands out of plastic crap. Nature made man and therefore made plastic islands. Unfortunately, it has not found a way of stopping birds, fish, and turtles from eating indigestible materials that superficially look like food. Nature is so smart and the world is still very beautiful. It's not very cold in Zombie Island tonight, but I think I'll turn the central heating on to be on the safe side and watch I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here. And Ant and December don't go on about shit. I don't. I. I don't know. Some of your some of your uh, abbreviations, Andy. Help me out here a little bit, brother. Uh, and, and don't go on about shitloads of plastic crap 
floating around in the sea and killing cute little turtles. <laughs> there you go. So this was Andy uh, commenting on my video of the sandhill cranes. The sandhill cranes landing uh, in the National Wildlife Refuge, the Bosque de Apache National Wildlife Refuge in New Mexico. Talking about cranes. Fantastic birds. Zombie Island mindlessly wiped out all European cranes from its shores hundreds of years ago. They had no worth in themselves just mere prestige food for the lords and ladies in their castles. We are now enlightened and have introduced the birds again to protected areas and they are increasing steadily so that hopefully bird watchers can have something interesting to look at when they drive to the nature reserve. Nobody has their eye on the cranes as food at the moment as supermarket shopping by car is much more convenient. But such large, tasty waterfowl will need luck surviving the forthcoming dark ages. Global warming is also encouraging a few new species of heron to hop over from the Eurozone to colonize here, or more likely recolonize areas that were shot out. The only cranes I see around here are the same ones that we see in Austin, Texas. The only cranes I see around here are those looming over Warwick University campus, one of Zombie Island's biggest universities, a new medical center here, a new engineering block there, a physics department expansion, and a bigger business school. And of course, we need a place to house gender studies. As a microcosm of the economy it serves, it is expected, meaning the university, is expected to keep growing infinitely. The expansion of the campus into the surrounding farmland is endless. A university used to be something special, where knowledge was sacred for its own sake, but now they are just corporate, New World Order elite and semi-elite training center whores, where teeming masses of the brightest and most ambitious young homo saps are flown to from around the world to receive instructions and initiations into the more special and intellectual work niches of the cancer. Of a summer evening, you can see all the young clueless morons elegantly strutting and displaying outside the student union building, hoping to attract a mate or be, or be headhunted by a corporate scout. And guys, if the battery runs out, uh, here, if global industrial civilization collapses in the middle of this rant, I'm sorry. I'm going to steam on ahead and hopefully the battery on my camera will survive. Okay, Andy, not always a fan of the Guardian. <clears throat> There was an article in The Guardian recently that stated electric cars will require only 50% of the energy that, in, that internal combustion cars do when all the energy is factored in. So we can easily run 2 billion cars instead of 1 billion if we just got right down to ram it up all that energy revolution fast enough. I think that's what it implies anyway, which is great, isn't it? However, the article did not say if the stupendous amounts of fossil fuels required to build the squillions of tons of necessary alternative energy infrastructure were factored in, 
or if such infrastructure would then be enough to run 1 billion e-cars factoring in all the other vital stuff like agriculture and food, retail, heating and air conditioning, mining of ores, steel smelting, clothing, global aviation and travel, telecommunications, computers, trains, waste and water, finance and banking, the construction industry, fishing, road building and repairs of bridges, and maintenance of all of suburbia, science and research, hobby products, sports and leisure, the internet, forestry and land management, media and entertainments, cosmetics, plastics, education and healthcare provision, government, armed forces, police, cargo ships, and many other things that it would also need to power at the same time as the 1 billion e-cars, including repairing of the green energy infrastructure itself and also providing an expanding energy sector forever for the necessary systemic growth each year to stop debt-based capitalism from collapsing. But I don't think such cynicism is a good trait. I trust the Guardian with my life without question just as I trust the neoliberalist mainstream media in general. The new, the new World Order would never create prop, obvious propaganda, use bad research, research, or ignore relevant arguments or information. And my comment to that rant was, Roads and tires alone will be enough to finish off the planet. All the rest is just icing on the cake. And Andy replied back, It is amazing how tolerant the earth has been so far. Like a stretched rubber band is. Okay, this was Andy's comment when he saw this picture of the LED lights, these two million fucking uh, little planet-saving LED lights in the little town of uh, Johnson City, Texas, which, which was truly horrific. <clears throat> This reminds me of those beautiful pulsating curls in Blue Planet 2. Art imitates life, even in noxious, oily places like Jesus Land. Jesus Land is his name for America. That despise and want to destroy all life. Maybe it's an unconscious attempt to draw attention to the plight of coral reefs by the culture that is destroying them an act of heartfelt contrition, or maybe not. Whatever their point is with this completely over-the-top lighting display, whatever their point is, it is definitely an impressive galaxy of lights. Just one tree would have been sufficient, really. It's hard to convey the true wonder of it all, what it all means. They say for every fairy light on the trees, there is at least one factory in China pumping out hundreds of tons of plastic crap. We can barely grasp the astronomical scale and magical complexity of it all. Every culture seems to feel compelled to insanely and unquestioningly celebrate some now completely irrelevant landmark event that happened hundreds of years ago like we do in Zombie Island with our bonfire night when we all drive to castles and stately homes to celebrate the initiation by the tutors of the system of commerce that eventually blew up the complete house of life, or something like that. I can't remember anymore. But LEDs are harmless. 
So it is okay to industrially create trillions of them along with trillions of other harmless industrial products. It will be Christmas time in Zombie Island soon. Woohoo! Can't wait. Must get an advent calendar. It's our major put lights absolutely fucking everywhere insane celebration. Trying to dispel the darkness and cold of midwinter or the birth of some archetype typically good holy man role model that probably did not even exist going by the quality of the billions of clueless fucking humans walking around today anyway. Nobody really knows why they feel compelled to put lights absolutely everywhere at specific times of the year like total twats. They just do it without question because everyone else does it like they do, like they do everything without question. However, Time has moved on without the clueless morons noticing things changing. There's too much fucking light now, except in the mainstream media. Not too little, and it's not even cold anymore. There isn't anything to celebrate here. But Christmas is still a great time of year for children anyway. Time to open presents maybe get an orange or a small plastic toy from Toys R Us. I think they went bankrupt. There's millions, says Jeffrey the giraffe with deformed legs, so hopefully they'll get the right one. Or a new computer or iPhone. Grandma might be... Grandma might get a onesie so she can feel included if a little foolish. I have no idea what a onesie is. For many, Christmas is simply a time to visit relatives in Australia for a couple of days. For those that stay at home, there's some great films on TV and a feast of tasteless dry white meat from a bird discovered in one of our past colonies, now reared in millions, bred into a white ugly monstrosity, a sad reflection of its former glory as a stunning wild pheasant. Later, maybe the kids can help Dad cut the lawn, as is fast becoming traditional on Christmas Day. King Charles III will no doubt make a boring speech to the nation with some vague reminders of challenges ahead, and then everyone will get ready for another future obsessed year of frugality and self-sacrifice. The nights are drawing in, and the years go by so fast now. So that is up with Black Friday in Zombie Island. We also get the Black Friday meme pushing in Zombie Island. That meme seemed to appear out of nowhere a couple of years ago. The neoclassical economy literate careerist fucktards controlling Zombie Island probably had a power meeting in a big tower somewhere to find a way to boost G GDP and some bright spark said, what about that Black Friday idea from Jesus Land? And they unanimously agreed, so orders were sent out to the media and admin, and it became a cultural thing. Might even be a holiday. Anything to fucking boost sales in the lull prior to the Christmas madness. Black Friday had hit the big time. It's amazing how fast these commerce-obsessed fuckers can implement a large-scale social engineering product when there is something in it for them. The poor little global warming meme has to struggle to be adopted the hard way, passed on very occasionally from one sullen 
football crazy, clueless moron car driver to the next and mostly discarded. Humans get no immediate gratification or personal benefit from a harsh reality meme like global warming, so it's got no fucking chance of hitting the big time and won't get any help from the sharp-suited, gl glorified barrow boys and inbred toffs that control the money and memes. But uh, all of this is Andy winding up for his response to uh, my own depressed collapsitarian's Thanksgiving blessing. How would uh, Andy, if, if they had Thanksgiving in Zombie Island, what would Andy's blessing be? <clears throat> and hopefully the, uh, the batteries are, this might be the single longest, most blistering rant in history from Zombie Island. <clears throat> Tell it like it is, Andy. Here is my special Black Friday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and bonfire night message to industrial civilization, Big Brother, the New World Order, and any other neoliberalist corporate overlords listening in. Thanks for not allowing money and corruption to rule, and for the care and thought you put into every single daily decision and for making our clueless moron lives so wonderful. Thanks for not letting cruel might is right Darwinism rule over common human decency. For preventing the evil humans to get to the top, to make decisions and rule. Thank you for using peer-reviewed science and critical thinking to create meaningful and wise, sustainable policy that reflects the time we are living in. Thanks for not marginalizing climate science and the environmentally concerned to the fringes of society. For the constant, timely increases in economic growth and industrialism. Thank you for extracting all of the fossil fuels and destroying all those unnecessary forests and other habitats to make way for turning the whole planet into a human gigabreeding colony and food factory, for plasticizing the Pacific Ocean and creating new junk islands to live on. Thank you for creating endless traffic jam filled highway joy and increasing the number of teeming landfill site mega shitties. Thanks for millions of jumbo jets turning the sky streaky with chemtrails to cool the planet and the cheapo package holidays to allow everybody to travel the globe on a whim. Thanks for allowing the dimwit masses to live like kings for doing virtually nothing except conforming to your cancerous ideology for the rampaging wildfires, mega hurricanes, and increasing number, wait, oops, mega hurricanes and making our climate so unpredictable and interesting. Thanks for our glorious nations and their competing against each other like bacteria in a petri dish. Thanks for the military buildup and constant existential threat of nuclear war and extra special thanks for finding ways to boost population size, trying to create artificial intelligence, geoengineering projects, the e-car revolution hopium, genetic engineering improvements to plants and animals, new potential forms of wonderful infinite energy, and trying to colonize space. Your efforts are appreciated 
No, they really are. Thank you for the hope all this gives. And a special thank you message needs to go out to all the people of the earth as well. Thank you for voting for the worst leaders imaginable and defending their insaneness ideologies for your religions and pseudoscience and magical thinking and for always putting immediate personal gratification and your mindless plankton-like biological mandates before wisdom, self-sacrifice, everything good and true, and what we know about the world. For denying reality at every opportunity, for being hard-working and ambitious, worthy members of the community, and always putting money and self-interest first, and for breeding rampantly and exponentially as expected of you. Thank you, everybody, for always being so fucking human. <laughs> there you go. I think, uh, I think that uh, is a fitting Thanksgiving message from Brother Andy in uh, Zombie Island. And I just can't wait uh, to hear what Brother Andy has to say as Christmas and New Year 2018 washes in over Zombie Island, but we can look forward to that in future Sundays. For this a view from Zombie Island, smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. Amen. Brother Andy. I'm going to bed, guys. I am fucking whipped. You and the little dog, the little Christmas elf, has had his ass kicked at the Optimus Club. I will try to be back tomorrow morning with my economic meltdown roundup rant. We will see. Bye, guys.